The further into a video game you go, the harder things should get, but we've all had those experiences of unexpected difficulty spikes. It can be daunting when a video game throws something truly challenging at us early on, but it does happen and those boss fights can stick with us for all the right or wrong reasons, and sometimes both. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are 10 needlessly hard early video game bosses. Number 10. Berserker – Gears of War at its core, Gears of War is a series about buff men with big frigging guns blasting their way to victory through the unfortunate bodies of disgusting monsters. Pull the trigger and have some fun. The thing with the Berserker is it totally throws players off and changes the momentum of the game. Rather than being all about firing as much ammo as possible into anything non-human that moves, the Berserker needs to be taken down by leading it out into the open. Time to use your brains, Marcus Phoenix, and rest that brawn for just a few moments. It's not just about avoiding the Berserker, it's about drawing it towards the door and moving at just the right moment so that it pops it off its hinges. Repeat this a few times and you can drag the aggravated beast out into the open air where you can then take it down in spectacular fashion with the laser guided hammer of dawn. To some extent the battle is all about knowing your surroundings as getting caught in a corner or stuck on a pillar can cause your very squished downfall quickly. With no way to brute force the battle you've got only the dodge button and your wits to see you through. Hope you limbered up. Number 9. Brock – Pokemon Red and Blue one of the often overlooked things about many Pokemon games is their baked-in difficulty modifier. The games themselves don't have any selectable choices, but it comes down to whatever starter Pokemon you pick. For example, in Pokemon Red and Blue, you're going to have the easiest time against the first two gym leader type preferences, Rock and Water, by taking Bulbasaur. Squirtle will get you moving, but not quite as swiftly. Charmander, however, is what you take if you want to struggle. That being said, the game never expresses this, and a lot of players just pick Charmander because they like the design or it's array of fire-based skills which are much more uncommon throughout the region. Players who go with the flame-breathing lizard will hit a brick wall against rock if they haven't trained enough or diversified their team. Since there's no way to catch a grass or water type yet to get those super effective hits, you'll have to make do with the likes of Charmander's Ember or a Butterfree's Confusion to make a dent in those defenses. In the 2004 remakes Fire Red and Leaf Green, Charmander can learn Metal Claw which gives it a fighting chance, thus making it easier to send Brock crying to his beloved Nurse Joy. Number 8. Xenomorph – Alien Isolation Alien Isolation's story and tone are a direct follow-up to the original film. Before the waves of xenomorphs that Ripley and company had to fight off in 1986's Aliens, there was just the one H.R. Geiger-designed extraterrestrial, and that was enough to strike fear into our hearts. Alien Isolation succeeds in doing so much with so little, with just one xenomorph stalking the abandoned station, hunting its humanoid prey. Despite being the big bad boss of the piece, the xenomorph becomes the crux of Alien Isolation's gameplay about an hour in, and over the ensuing chapters, makes its presence felt. If it catches you, you're almost certainly done for, and if you can't fight it off with fire, then it really doesn't matter how much health you have. If that alien grabs you, it's game over. Avoiding the Xenomorph's one-hit kill requires keen stealth sensibilities, sneaking past, hiding in lockers, and distracting the beast with items. Sometimes, however, all the skill and patience in the world can't avoid situations where you're thrown into combat with humans and droids and get taken out by the Xeno as it's attracted to its suddenly very loud and very exposed lunch. With no way to kill the thing until a certain point in the story, you'll feel like it's plaything more than a few times along the way. Number 7. Zangetsu – Bloodstained – Ritual of the Night as a spiritual successor to Castlevania, it's no surprise that Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is on the tough side of things. Whilst its first boss fight sets up what to expect from the difficulty of the title, it's actually the next showdown that can really cause some stress. Zangetsu is the first boss in the castle where the majority of the game takes place. Also, he represents a neat connection to the spin-off game, Curse of the Moon, where he was the main playable character. Zangetsu's output of damage isn't necessarily the entire problem, it's its speed that causes an issue. With a selection of attacks that look pretty similar, he can be hard to read and dodge accordingly, and can dish out the punishment if you can't make enough space between you and his sword, which, halfway through the fight, he sets ablaze and gains a ton of extra range on. If at this point you don't know if Bloodstained is for you, this would be the moment of truth. Thankfully, Ritual of the Night, like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, has RPG elements, so you can power level to increase your chances against Zangetsu. That is, if you don't mind going around and around in the same loop of rooms, as the area of the castle you can explore that early into the game is rather small. Small. Number 6. Tree Sentinel – Elden Ring 
It wouldn't be a list about difficult boss fights without an entry on a From Software game who are quite literally responsible for pages of responses when you Google search hard video game bosses. That's not a cheeky opening line, it's just a fact. The first enemy every player encounters in Elden Ring outside of the tutorial guaranteed is the Tree Sentinel. It sets the stage for the game, especially for those who have never touched a From Software title up until that point, by absolutely battering anyone that comes close enough. Bold and or stubborn players will see this immediate challenge and face it down for as long as it takes however, but despite being the first enemy in the game, the intention is not for players to overcome it until much later. Get yourself a good few level ups and a horse and you stand a much better chance. You're better off not trying to brute force this one. The entire concept of the Tree Sentinel is that it's placed there to basically force players to go elsewhere, to show them that, unlike Dark Souls and Bloodborne, this is not a linear experience. If you get absolutely rocked by a creature, it's okay to look for another path and explore somewhere else. I mean, you're probably going to get mauled by whatever lurks there too, but that's the FromSoft experience for you. Number 5. Commissioner Streets of Rage 4 after 26 years with no new releases, Streets of Rage 4 brought back the beloved Mega Drive side-scrolling beat-em-up with full pomp and circumstance. The art style is gorgeous, the soundtrack is fantastic, and the boss battles are agonisingly hard. Seriously, the final boss of this game is truly a test of willpower, but that doesn't mean the early stages of the game are a cakewalk. Mission 2 explores the corrupt police precinct and faces players off against the Commissioner. He may look like no spring chicken, but he has both power and speed on his side. If you're in his way when he flashes white then he'll curl you up like a basketball and throw you down to the ground, causing some damage and also putting you prone and in further jeopardy. Considering the commissioner can summon various police officers into the fight, it can get messy fast, harder to avoid the boss's big attacks and more vulnerable after the fact. As the battle progresses, his likelihood of getting a grasp on you increases, making this one a battle that gets noticeably tougher as it goes on. At least his battle theme is a funky little jam that won't get old even if you have to hear it several times over. Number 4. Deathstroke – Batman Arkham Origins Standard combat in the Arkham games is rewarding and mindless fun, putting you in the big spiked boots of Batman and all those rippling muscles. Pulling off great combos and flying from foe to foe feels good. Deathstroke puts his foot down on being treated like any other goon. Batman Arkham Origins is set on December 24th, as Batman has to subdue eight assassins sent to make his crime-fighting ways a thing of the past. Perhaps as a nod to the Arkham Asylum fight with Bane, which required players to use context clues and well-timed manoeuvres, Arkham Origins' first boss fight with Deathstroke slows things right down. Wailing on the assassin is all well and good, but if you don't have your counters timed out right then you're going to have a pretty rough time. In the second phase, Deathstroke doesn't hold back and if you slip up it's curtains for the Cape Crusader, as missing too many will result in a game over. The battle is slow and arduous at the best of times and culminates in Deathstroke throwing explosive canisters that need to be caught mid-air just to top it all off. Not only is this an early boss fight in the game, Deathstroke is the first of eight assassins that Batman has to contend with. Talk about a disappointing Christmas gift. Number 3. Soul Master – Hollow Knight Hollow Knight is a Metroidvania set in a beautiful dark world of underground bugs, beautiful music and total unfettered frustration. Many of the game's boss fights are an uphill battle all by themselves, but Soul Master is specifically memorable for being quite an early entry in the game's list of tough as nails foes. Soulmaster's attacks are a perfect example of how a lot of Hollow Knight boss fights work and demonstrate that timing is everything, not just acting as fast as possible but waiting for the right moment. The bug's projectile attacks will make your palms sweaty and your heart stop as you wait to jump at the right moment to make it clear of them without dropping straight back onto them. He's also incredibly fast, so the window for reading attacks takes some practice as does actually picking your spots to get your shots in. The boss will take several minutes to quell on a successful attempt but those minutes will feel like a lifetime as you wait to chip away at his health bar. Never let the weird but cute aesthetic of Hollow Knight fool you, this game does not want to hold your hand. Soulmaster specifically will do his darndest to crush you back for all the helpless insects you crushed along the way. Number 2. Phantom – Devil May Cry it's all well and good giving your boss enemy a weak point to focus on, but you've got to make it obvious and easy to hit. Think Zelda and its obnoxiously large eyeballs on every boss. That's the ticket. On the total opposite end of the spectrum, Devil May Cry laughs in your face and gives you Phantom. Phantom is a lava spewing arachnid that is covered in indestructible molten rock, which makes him a pretty tough boss to face off, as you can't just go in all guns blazing and you really need to pick your spots. You'd think that would be simple enough considering it's the first boss of the game, but Phantom doesn't care much for being shot 
shot in the face and will do its damnedest to throw you off. Fireballs and pillars of lavas will keep you figuratively on your toes and literally off them, asking Dante to perform some pretty nifty acrobatics if he doesn't want to be toasted alive. With ranged attacks and all those legs and a scorpion-like tail to deal with up close, most players will be pretty thrown off when it comes to where they should be standing or fighting from. Probably best to leave this thing and call it a day, Dante. You've only come so far, you've still got time to turn back around. Number 1. Udix Gundir, Dark Souls 3 The first boss of Dark Souls 3, Udix Gundir, is a corrupted champion knight that is found kneeling and waiting for the player at the end of the tutorial. Removing the sword from his chest causes him to rise to the occasion, dwarfing the Ashen One and putting the fear of God in players. If you figured you had Dark Souls sussed out and thought you could get through on the third entry by turtling up with a sword and shield, then Udix Gundir is here to rain on your parade. The only way to take Udix down is through careful ducking and weaving, getting your hits in where you can and retreating back out of the range of his swinging halberd. As with every Dark Souls boss, it's try, try and try again until you memorise a pattern or find a solution that works for you, and once you start getting the upper hand on Udix Gundir, you'll start to feel pretty damn smug about it. That is, until he suddenly transforms into this awful leech-covered lizard monstrosity that can undo that progress you've made pretty darn quickly. With more range and more power than ever before, this thing is not messing around. Dark Souls and difficulty are fine wine and cheese, but making your tutorial boss this hard just seems like a whole new level of cruelty. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below and brag about how easy all of these boss fights are. You know you wanna. While you're there, let us know what early game boss fights you struggled against. Like this video, share it with your friends, don't forget to subscribe. I've been Cypher What Culture, and have a good week.